Hello everyone. Welcome one second to yet another speaker live session on Hack This Fall 2.0 YouTube channel. I can again, you know, feel that excitement. I'm so happy to see you all here once again. And you all are like, you know, pumping your energy into the live chat and making us feel super energetic at the same time. So good to see everyone uh, in, in there in the live chat. Once again, let's let's bring some of your favorite emojis in the chat so that we can identify your excitement and you know uh know more about how excited you are about this session i can see the exclamations coming up the fire emojis the star emojis and whatnot thanks everyone for joining in and i hope you all are doing safe awesome so for all of those who have been joining for the very first time let me tell you what hack this fall is all about hack this fall is a virtual hackathon of 48 hours duration we'll be hosting it on 22nd to 24th of October. We do have various themes coming up. Make sure you have registered yourself from the day post link. All the required links are there in the description of this video. So make sure you check them out as well. For this stream, we have a very interesting topic, a very a topic to on which you know many people out there are curious to know more about. It's like introduction to computer vision. And guess what? One of our title sponsors, Inspirate AI are here to present in front of you everything about the scene. So get ready with all your questions and get your seat belts real tight because we are going to jump onto this roller coaster of amazing technology with our special guest and speaker, Amanda. Hi, Hi Amanda, how's it going? Good, good. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, with Inspirit AI. We are a online camp that offers 24, uh, 25 hour uh, programs on learning things like computer vision. So AI is a super hot topic right now. Um, I'm curious to know what what are your thoughts of AI? What applications? Yeah, I see someone go like gonna build an app after this. Exactly. Yeah. So this is a super cool community too as well. Um, just because you're you're knowing people in the industry, you're able to grow with people. In Spirit AI is a very it's an awesome opportunity to uh, like learn with a small cohort of other people as well. So I'm definitely very excited to talk to you all about computer vision. And so a little bit about me. Um, I studied my undergrad at Stanford learning symbolic systems, which is a inter or a interdisciplinary major combining a philosophy, psychology, linguistics and computer science. So things like natural language processing, computer vision, very applicable and um, great ways to grow. And so uh, after this presentation, if you have questions about the Stanford application process, about InSpirit AI, about the experience in general, feel free to ask after. Um, my intention with this presentation is to be very interactive. So I'll be showing you a few clips. I will be asking you all tons of questions. Um, interaction is a fantastic part of learning. So do not hesitate to ask any questions. And so let's get into introduction to computer vision. And so I'm going to share my screen. Definitely. Thanks a lot for introducing yourself. And we are so very much looking forward to the session as well. And all our live audience, all our hackers watching us live, make sure you interact and answer all the questions and ask questions at the same time. This is the best way to learn together. And over to you, Amanda. Let me quickly bring up your screen. The virtual stage is all yours. Awesome. All right. So introduction to computer vision aka making computers see with deep learning. So who here has who here has um, looked into machine learning, anything in general, linear regression, logis logistic regression, classifiers? Do we have any, any self-learners, any self-starters here? Yeah, so computer vision is especially special because, yeah, techies, we want to make, we want to take in our data and in such a way that machines are able to understand it. So before we start, let's, yeah, let's start with a refresher on machine learning. And then from there, we'll talk about computer vision. We'll talk a little bit about the pipeline and how to turn images into numbers. And so what is machine learning? It is a very hot topic, just like AI. So what are people's thoughts? When you hear machine learning, what do you think about? 
What does machine learning mean to you? Yeah, so we have a few people who haven't quite worked with machine learning yet, and that is all good. We definitely um, work with students who have never even coded before, which is awesome. Um, I work as a curriculum manager and an instructor at InSpirit AI. And so I have definitely worked with students who are seeing this for the first time. And so machine learning, we had a few guesses. Okay, training the machine to predict something, exactly that. And so machine learning is how computers learn the solution to a problem by applying algorithms to data rather than being directly told what to do. And so the machine learning pipeline is awesome because you take in your data input, you have your output, and in between is the algorithm you're using. And that'll be important later as we evaluate computer vision because it's so much more complicated than say, a data table. But yeah, people are saying it's a study of algorithms, predictions, exactly that. And so let's get into computer vision. And so what are people's thoughts on computer vision? We talked a little bit about machine learning. <laughs> Someone says, really excited to build a model on computer vision after this. I, I love the enthusiasm. Yeah, what is computer vision? Do people have any, any examples, any, any big ones right now that are hot topics? Feel free to drop them in the chat. They're all good guesses. Let's see, what are some applications people can think of? Do we have any smartphone users? Do we have um, people who use Zoom meetings and filters? Yeah, where I'm seeing like taking out info from images. Yeah, ability of computer to process digital images or data. Okay, I love it, great. And so uh, no one said it so far, but did anyone think of like self-driving cars? Ooh, I see face detection, that's a great one. Anyone think of Tesla self-driving cars? Yeah, that's a big one. And so I'm gonna show you a short clip of what a Tesla sees as it drives. And then as you watch it, do you think, what do you notice about what you see on the road and how the car reacts? Exactly. Biggest one is definitely Tesla's. And so before we get into this, definitely be aware of this legend at the bottom. And then to the very right, this is what the car is seeing. And then in here, this is what the human's seeing. Notice that the human is not driving. This is autopilot. So we're gonna watch about 90 seconds of this. Do you drop any observations you have in the chat or just any questions as well. There's no video, so don't worry about it. Awesome. I see some great comments in the chat as well. I'll pick a few out to kind of talk about too. So great. Uh, someone has already watched this video, which is super awesome. Looking forward to what you have to say in the chat as well. Um, people are talking about, you know, vehicle traffic signal detection. Uh, people are mentioning analysis surrounding 
taking turns based on algorithm or calculation. Um, yeah, someone also says like even the, the minute details are captured. Did anyone notice in this bottom like rear rearward vehicle camera, it's also noticing like the blur of the trees. Yeah, yeah. So this is, did anyone else notice anything about how say the environment changed from the beginning to the end of the clip? Yeah, we definitely started on say like a college campus and now we're we're kind of in the middle of not, not many other cars. So that kind of speaks to the power of computer vision, right? So notice we only watched 90 seconds of this, um, but the car was taken, taking in live details and able to navigate through that terrain so well. And so that is why computer vision is such a hot topic right now. We saw the human didn't even touch the steering wheel. Everything seemed good here. So great. Did anyone else notice anything else about um, what the car might have seen, how the car react? Yeah, someone definitely says started in a cluttered location, moved to vacant spaces, city to outskirts, exactly that. Did anyone notice how the Tesla reacted around say, actually, do we have any drivers here? Anyone of driving age? What are things you notice on the road? Hmm, I like it. So maps, lines, and someone also said the speed increased in the vacant location, exactly. So as humans, we're able to implicitly take all those things in as we drive. And so notice that the Tesla created or had these bounding boxes that signified things that, you know, we implicitly see like other cars, like bicyclists, um, even the blurs in the trees, stop signs. Yeah, these are all important things to consider as we're driving. We know that as humans, we want our cars to know that. Otherwise, why would we want them to drive for us, right? And so really cool thing about being human, we can look around, see things like a stop sign, traffic lights. These are all meaningful concepts for us. But in order to drive a car, a computer needs to do that as well. And as we saw from this video, it needs to do that in live time. It can't have, you know, 90 images for those 90 seconds. It needs to be able to take information as rapidly as we do. And so computer vision is a field of artificial intelligence that trains computers to interpret and understand the visual world. And so here is another example. We have Stanford researchers who trained a model, kind of very relevant with COVID-19, to detect whether hand hygiene occurred in a video frame based on whether actions were considered performed. And so let's take a look at the left video. And so we see this threshold bar, it goes to the right and turns red if it thinks that the people in the frames have washed their hands. We see on the right, it has this event, enter no wash with a red bounding box, and it has enter washed with a green bounding box, and it even has yellow. And so what are some observations people have about what the computer is seeing? How, how does it tell if someone is washing their hands? What what are some implicit, meaningful concepts we can pull as humans? Any thoughts? If you were to watch someone in the bathroom washing their hands, how would you determine it? Okay, we have sensors. All right. What are people's thoughts? Do you think, uh, so in this video, this person or these people, they tend to be putting their hands here. Do you think the computer is focusing on this area? Yeah, so those are all good, good observations. So someone says it will see how much uh, part of their body is visible for how much time. It will detect whether like they're rubbing their hands. Also notice this is kind of like a saliency map. So you can't see say like the color of their clothing, color of their skin. So yeah. 
it uh, it very well might be that the machine is looking for movement of hand, maybe timing like a 10 second wash. Yeah. And so as humans were, or yeah, the delay or the time taken, as humans, we're able to just tell this immediately. And that speaks a lot to our intelligence, um, which is why it is such a hot topic to be able to program machines to do this as well, right? Great. And so more on computer vision. So we've seen, we've seen Tesla so with self-driving cars. We've seen researchers detecting hand washing. What are some other examples of computer vision? Um, maybe things that are pervasive in your life. Um, any ideas? Feel free to drop them in the chat. I might have given you hints earlier. Ooh, Google Lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, feel free to keep dropping them in the chat. They're all all really good. Mask detection, especially relevant um, right now. Uh, I know if you check GitHub, there will definitely be a few people experimenting with computer vision libraries on mask detection, face detection, animal detection. Yeah. Um, I love that people are mentioning that self-driving cars have different implications in different places. Yeah, automated door opening, great. And so let's talk about one example. Ooh, I like QR code scanner. Let's talk about one example. Did anyone think of Snapchat filters or just like social media filters? Any Anyone have smartphones and are really into that? Has anyone, is anyone curious about how they work? Has anyone managed to trick their filter into say, putting a filter onto a inanimate object? Yeah, has anyone heard of say, um, you, you take a photo and it, it puts the filter on something behind you, but you're like, there's nothing behind me. Wonder why that is, right? And so, this is how Snapchat filters work. So the first step is facial detection. It will create a bounding box over what it thinks is the image's face. And then from there, it will identify or it will place these things called facial landmarks onto the face. And so there are about 68 total. And notice that these facial landmarks, they're concentrated towards things that we as humans definitely way more in terms of detecting the whole face. So eyebrows, eyes, mouth, definitely the chin. And then from there, we use something called like Euclidean distance in order to map the face. Yeah, and someone says captures the most sharp features called landmarks. Yeah. And then from there, it adds the filter. Um, and so that is how Snapchat filters work. Um, in InSpirit AI, in our um, last half of the program, we definitely do projects that have to do with things like facial landmarks. Yeah. And so I love that someone says some apps detect age and it's done with the help of machine learning. Machine learning is definitely a great um, use of that. And so we chatted about machine learning, we chatted about computer vision, we chatted the input, the output. So our input today is images, and we need to figure out how to turn images into numbers that computers can, can work with. And so that is a huge part of computer vision. So let's get into that. Let's take this image of a dog. Uh, notice that it's, it's black and white. And so how might we feed this into a machine learning model? Any ideas? I do remember that um, in the beginning, people said they were new to machine learning, which is super awesome. Don't expect you to know this. I do like that people are mentioning OpenCV. OpenCV is a fantastic computer vision library. Yeah, and someone says, yeah, these are pixels. Um, and we definitely want to represent this image as a matrix. And so an image is definitely just a matrix of numbers. So if we zoom in to this ear, and then zoom in again, we see this S shape. 
And if we keep on zooming in, we see that we can represent it with numbers. And so each number represents the intensity of a pixel where the values go from zero, which is the darkest, to 255, which is the lightest. And so if you were to able, if you were to able to circle, say, the values closer to zero, say under 100, um, you'd see that an S shape would form corresponding to this S um, shape in the dog's ear. So yeah, zero to 255, I love it. Um, some people are also ahead of us too. So I like that as well. Um, my next question was, yes. So yes, computer vision is all about making sense of data that looks like this. And so a few people were, were kind of ahead of us. So the last picture was in black and white. Now this one's in color. So can someone in the chat again, uh, make another guess? How might we represent this image, which is in color? So I'm seeing RGB, yes, definitely red, green, blue channels. So instead, instead of say a single matrix, now we have this red matrix, green matrix, blue matrix, all represented by matrices of numbers. I love it. Great. And so let's chat a little bit more about these intensity values. Um, a little bit of math. So we've got a image of a parrot in color. And so since it's in color, we have the red channel, green channel, blue channel. And the dimensions of the image are 1,000 by 1,000. This image is in color. How many intensity values are in this image? Any guesses? A little bit of math. Feel free to drop it in the chat. Cool. So we have a few guesses in the chat. Let's let's chat about this together. And so we know that this image is 1,000 by 1,000. So 1,000 by 1,000, or 1,000 times 1,000 would be a million. And so that would be the number of intensity values if it was grayscale. But since we have these three color channels, RGB, we multiply that what we multiply that 1 million by three to get 3 million intensity values. And so before I chatted about computer vision, I asked, has anyone worked with linear regression? Has anyone worked with logistic regression? With, with linear and logistic regression, those are baseline models and they're, they're dealing with way less input features. Computer vision is so difficult because now we're dealing with say 3 million input features in just a single image. And that's a, that's a testament to how and why like the, the Tesla is so powerful. It's able to take in all of that information. And so what are people's thoughts? So we chatted a little bit about machine learning, how, what kind of model would we use for computer vision? Would, would a logistic regression work for us? Someone says, it seems too simple. I like what you're getting out of there. And so definitely with computer vision, we want to use neural networks. Um, I won't get in, yes, deep learning, absolutely. I won't get into the, the structure of neural networks, but kind of why we would need it for computer vision. And so, ooh, yeah. And so definitely a neural network would be useful for dealing with those 3 million intensity values. Um, and so things like logistic regression, yeah. Things like baseline models, they are not powerful enough 
for um, say telling the difference between a cat and a dog. Way too simple. Um, and so simple classification algorithms like logistic regression, yeah, those definitely don't work for computer vision, um, which is why we would need neural networks. And so this is an example of a lecture that we might give you at InSpirit AI um, before we hop into our five-person cohorts for coding sessions. Um, this is the conclusion of, say, like the presentation on computer vision itself. But I definitely want to chat a little bit about the InSpirit AI program. And so I know that it was dropped in the chat, but if you go to InSpiritAI.com, I will also, yeah, someone mentioned CNN, RNN, LSTMs. Those are definitely more advanced neural networks that are great. Yeah. And so I'll chat a little bit more about um, InSpirit AI, namely our AI Scholars program. If this presentation was digestible for you, um, that's awesome. Uh, we, we love like teaching people from the ground up as well. So if, you, if you're new to coding or unsure about coding, we have, um, we have very accomplished and competent instructors who have gone to Stanford and gone to MIT, Harvard, um, currently doing research or working in the industry. We just have a great diversity of, um, a great group of diverse instructors um, that you can network with as well. And so I'll chat a little bit about AI Scholars. AI Scholars is our high school program. It is a remote live online program. It is a 10 session, 25 hour program that exposes high school students to fundamental AI concepts. So things like logistic regression, linear regression, natural language processing, computer vision, neural networks, convolutional neural networks. Um, if you are new to coding, uh, we have instructors that love working with you. If you have, yeah, thank you. If you have experience with coding, um, we have programs that are geared for that. We can have you with a cohort of other students that are also very enthusiastic and have coded before. And so let's chat a little bit more about the structure. Um, if you go to the website, you'll see student outcomes. Um, these are all great things to consider. We have our fall program um, in process right now. Our winter program, we're still taking enrollments for. Do reach out. But I definitely want to talk about the structure of the program because I think that's kind of my favorite thing about it. And so in the first half of the program, we'll talk you through those, those baselines I chatted about, the, the regressions, natural language processing, neural nets, computer vision. Um, and then in the second half of the program, your instructors will guide you through a project. So say today we saw facial landmarks. So they might guide you through, say, like a project on facial emotion detection or understanding text input from Siri or um, a project on, say, distracted driving, where you can use the things you've learned about neural networks, convolutional neural networks to evaluate those. And you get to use really cool libraries like people mentioned CV or OpenCV. Um, we use Scikit-Learn as well. We use Keras. Great. And so examples of projects are like AI plus healthcare, so pneumonia detection, AI plus sustainability, so say like sustainable agriculture, um, using AI to predict crop yields. We have AI plus mobility, so things like the distracted driving project. Um, and then we even have like a NLP for finance project as well. Um, someone says, can we start with Python? Absolutely, Python is a fantastic language for um, learning machine learning and also just doing machine learning. Great, and so here's a sample schedule. As I said, it is 10 sessions, 
25 hours. Um, in the, the first part of the session, you will generally be with either um, the entire group of people getting some sort of lecture, or you will be in a smaller group, say 10 students getting a lecture on say natural language processing, computer vision, um, AI ethics. And then from there, you will spend the last half of a class session in five person groups coding with your instructor. And so if you've never coded in Python before, we are totally welcoming of um, students who are new. Um, in fact, our goals are to one, create engaging and collaborative environments and also present the information in a way that's digestible and in a way that makes you want to continue after our program. And so I've seen a lot of very, <laughs> very enthusiastic people. Um, I know that you all have a discord. So community building is awesome. And Spirit AI is a fantastic opportunity to do that as well. I see that someone also says R is old, Python is the future. Um, I love that because I'm a huge fan of R. So um, you can definitely like say chat with chat with instructors on their favorite coding languages, on you know, maybe their favorite models, um, and so on. And so this is a sample schedule of our um, scholars program. And then from there, we also have our deep dives program, which is available for students who have taken the scholars program. And deep dives is awesome because you can learn about things like reinforcement learning, RNNs, uh, LSTMs, more advanced neural nets that people mentioned in the chat earlier. And so um, do check out this website if you're interested. Um, contact us if you have questions. Um, for now, I am ready to take your questions. Um, thank you all for, for being very, uh, very active in the chat. Cool. Yeah, feel free to ask me questions about, say, like my, I don't know, anything you want. Definitely, it was indeed an insightful session, and I could see the, you know, engagement in the chat as well. Everyone was super inter interactive. Thanks a lot, Amanda, for sharing all of those things. Yeah, um, we have our the the first first few fall sessions starting up this week, but we are taking enrollment for our winter sessions. If you contact us, maybe about our fall sessions, we might be able to squeeze you in. But um, as always, we love to hear about interested students um, because it helps us um, kind of plan in the future as well. Awesome. Someone Let said, bring, yeah. mm -hmm. Let me bring that question once from Ishan. How do you recommend someone to start with AI or ML? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, to start with AI or ML, uh, a good way to start would be to consider a problem that you're very interested in. So say say you're very interested in self-driving cars. From there, you could visit a website like Papers with Code, read research papers, see how um, researchers in the field have tackled that problem um, and try to recreate it on your own. It's a great way to practice. Um, someone also mentioned uh, very relevant libraries like OpenCV. Um, definitely check those out. Medium is also a great resource. See how other people did things and see if you can tweak it and um, try to build something of your own. But as long as you're passionate about it, um, fantastic. Yeah, someone also asked, what are your views? Oh, okay, cool. Um, someone asked, what are your views regarding AI? <laughs> um, regarding AI taking jobs in the incoming future? That's a great mm -hmm. question because in InSpirit AI, we actually spend a day going over AI ethics and uh, discussing things like that. Um, I am of the opinion that AI can make our lives easier. So for example, um, truck driving. Um, in order to uh, 
say like move move supplies and move food from like parts of the country to other ones. Um, it's very strenuous on humans because humans can only be awake for so long. Humans can only drive for so long if we're able to use self-driving cars in that scenario. Um, we could have humans doing things that are less strenuous. Um, okay. If anything, I think, did anyone learn about say um, the industrial revolution? Um, they had like children working in factories. Um, AI can definitely make jobs safer um, and easier for humans and humans can um, work more like higher skilled jobs. So I, I'm personally not too worried. Yeah. Let's see. Definitely. Another question from Anubhav itself. What are some advanced computer vision project ideas that you will suggest? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today, today I went over computer vision, a field of AI that I am also interested in is natural language processing. So an advanced computer vision project idea that you, that I might suggest would be a combination of the two. So say, um, say building a model that can take in like sign language and turn it into um, it either like translate it or turn it into um, like audio output um, combinations like that. Wonderful, and you know that's a potential idea which everyone hackers who are listening feel free to you know try implementing this and make a project for the hackathon around that itself. It would be wonderful mm -hmm. to check them out. Mm -hmm. What what path would you suggest to master computer vision? Is there any path? which you would like to suggest? Hmm. Um, I'm a huge fan of transfer learning or um, the use of, so definitely, definitely look into famous, um, famous models like AlexNet, ResNet. Um, learn as much as you can from those, experiment from those and potentially build your own variation. Um, and compare it to those as well. Um, mastering computer vision is definitely like a very long process. You need a lot of repetitions, a lot of experience, um, and also a lot of collaboration with others as well. So it's, it's definitely a long process. Awesome, wonderful. There's, there's a good line over here, you know, hack this fall participation, introduce us to the fall program. You know, the fall comes into the name itself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Why, why MySQL is not much in use? Just the mm -hmm. I think it's uh, more a testament to how user-friendly Python is. Um, you, can, you can definitely try, but Python is kind of like all the rage now. As more people use it, um, more tools, more libraries get created for it. And it's kind of like a, a loop in that sense. So nothing against MySQL, it's just Python's great. Definitely. Other than that, there are so many fields, you know, any AI like CV, ML, data science, which field to choose and what should be kept in mind, especially for a beginner? Yeah, um, I chatted a little bit about like baseline models earlier today. So things like logistic regression, linear regression. I definitely recommend um, all of those fields are, are viable as long as you're passionate about it. But the, the foundation is say like, having your, your baseline models in check, um, understanding how to work with data, um, having like a strong foundation of math. Uh, but in general, those fields, all great ways to go. Definitely. And again, when we talk about machine learning, what is your preference or what should one choose, Java or Python? I am a huge fan of Python. Um, just it's super user friendly. Um, in terms of teaching students who have never coded before, so much faster. Um, in fact, as long as you're able to grasp the concepts first, you can just like go backwards and try to get stronger at your coding. And that's definitely the easiest with Python. Definitely. Harshita is asking, you showed us about how Tesla works. So would you like to share more about, you know, how, how it analyzes surroundings? Mm -hmm. um, 
The thing about Tesla and self-driving is that uh, cars are not completely self-driving right now. Um, I definitely alluded it alluded to how difficult the problem was. Uh, remember with the parrot image, we had like 3 million intensity values. With the video we watched, we had 90 seconds. And so imagine that the model there is using mm several, several, several frames per second. Um, the resolution is very high. So as you can imagine, it's it's using a very complicated neural network architecture. Um, mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of like the high level explanation I can give. <laughs> Definitely. And uh, according to you, which is better, OpenCV or TensorFlow? Mm, it depends on your problem. Um, open, I think, TensorFlow is definitely like a larger language that you would use to uh, code machine learning problems. And then OpenCV mm -hmm. is something you um, specialize in once you're there. Um, so in a, in a sense, like both. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Mm -hmm. And to start, with uh, to start with machine learning, do one needs to master the Python language? Uh, absolutely not, absolutely not. Um, we definitely have students who have never coded before. Um, even some yeah. students who maybe have never taken linear algebra, never taken multivariable calculus, but we're able to get them understanding the baseline class or baseline models and then get them going on to more advanced topics like natural language processing, computer vision, and uh, working their heads around neural networks. So you absolutely don't need to master Python. As long as you understand your, your input data, your output, everything in between, definitely something you can continue working on. And um, the field is always changing. So as you can imagine, yeah. say like a model that was state of the art eight years ago, it's OK now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. One more question. Any beginner-friendly hackathon, especially for CV enthusiasts? Ooh. I don't think this is a question I particularly particularly know much about, but I do think that um, is is this hackathon this this is a direction you can take with this hackathon. Yes. Definitely. I was about to say that. Feel free to, you know. Uh, participate because, of course, Hack This Fall is a beginner friendly hackathon, and we do have Open Innovation as one of the tracks. So, make sure you submit your project if you're building on top of CV, machine learning, or anything around the scene as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also find that um, sometimes people undersell themselves when it comes to things like beginner. So, definitely give it your best shot, um, and you'll surprise yourself. Absolutely. So one more question from Raj. He's trying to do a research on deception detection using AI, in which he's using NLP, OpenCV, and TensorFlow. What are your thoughts on these? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's awesome. Um, in terms of doing research, I definitely recommend looking up research papers that have done similar things, seeing what worked for them, seeing what didn't work for them, and trying to see if you can take a different direction and add something new to say that topic. But that, that's an awesome start. Yeah, absolutely. All the very best, Raj. What are the career aspects after getting into AI? Interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Someone asked earlier, are you afraid of AI taking all the jobs? I, I think AI has the potential to be very, very flexible in terms of career aspects. Um, as we saw today, like computer vision is an application. So if you want to do research um, and apply computer vision and say like facial emotion, hand washing, those are all very valuable. If you want to go into finance using AI for predicting stocks, if you're able to create a good model for that, um, that's, that's definitely something um, that will be very lucrative. Um, AI has a lot of be, just because AI is so predictive, it has a lot of um, good future career aspects. Yeah, definitely. We I remember, you know, we usually have HDF Connect, which we host every Wednesday. And recently we had a question uh, in one of them that will AI, you know, finish all the jobs of front-end developers or people who code websites? So what what's your take on that? Mm. I think... I am of the opinion that um, humans, I think, so 
AI is able to make our jobs easier, but as humans, we're kind of able to like use a bit of um, like part of human intelligence is like adding bits of like creativity that AI, at least right now, is not able to replicate. Um, so I am personally not worried about AI taking those opportunities uh, because I think it just gives us as humans the opportunity to work harder and uh, make our output even better. Totally, got your point. How, uh, next question is, how to make CV projects stand out? What is something yeah. unique which we can add to it? Yeah, um, definitely look up, look up uh, research papers. So like papers.com to see the like trending research topics. Try to replicate those and get more experience. And then from there, uh, think of a problem that you're passionate about that maybe other people have not tried to solve and try to mm -hmm. use computer vision to solve that. Fair enough. There are so many questions. Thanks to everyone for asking this. You know, really appreciate it. And one more question from Bud. Is there any framework which needs to be learned to start with OpenCV projects? Ooh. Um, with Inspired AI, we use um, Google Colab and we're just able to import just um, we're able to import it's like the most commonly used Python libraries. So in terms of barriers, it's very accessible. So nothing to worry about in terms of um, open CV projects. Awesome. One more question from Raj. What are your thoughts on using third party APIs for CV like Azure ML or Google's Auto ML? If you are building projects, should we code from scratch to work on open CV projects? What's your take on that? Um, let's see. In terms of using those, you're you're totally welcome to. In fact, I think it would be great practice um, to be able to say you can use things like Azure ML and um, Google's Auto ML. So definitely encourage that. That's not those are all great ways to go. Um, if you want to to code from scratch as well, that that is also an option. If you uh, say take an advanced um, deep learning class, you will find yourself coding. Um, neural networks from scratch. So those are all great ways to go because they give you more experience and more breadth in the, in the field. Awesome. So you, you gave an example about Tesla. So other than that, what all companies are doing great work around the same as well? Yeah. Um, does anyone here have, say, an Alexa inside their house or a, a Cortana? Uh, those I are do all- I have a Google Home, Google Home Assistant. Mm -hmm. Those are all fantastic uses of AI as well. Um, they're able to take in your audio input and um, like predict what your intent is and then give you a response that hopefully you will like. Yeah. I personally love it. I usually talk with my assistant a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, one more interesting question. You know, for example, someone who's having a weak logical ability in around thinking. Do you think that can be a hurdle to progress in mm. this domain? I think that's actually a very fun thing about programming and machine learning in general. Um, if mm -hmm. you feel like you are weak logically, um, you are always able to um, kind of kind of get better work on it. Um, discrete mathematics, a great way to go. Um, probability theory, is, is a good way of like shoring up your weaknesses as well. In terms of machine learning, um, linear algebra and multivariable calculus are a great, great foundational math in order to get into machine learning, but they're definitely not, I wouldn't call them hurdles. I would call them uh, part, of, part of getting there. It's, it's part of the learning process. Fair enough. We, we would love to know your journey as well, you know, while you, how you started learning Sevilla and other tech altogether. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mentioned that I majored in symbolic systems. So a interdisciplinary major um, combining philosophy, linguistics, psychology, and computer science. But for me, I definitely started with 
I, I really enjoy manipulating data. So understanding data yeah. sets, um, that, that's why I'm a huge fan of R, even though Python is so much easier to work with. Um, and so my journey was definitely um, a passion for working with data and um, interpreting the outputs that I've mentioned a lot today. And then from there, realizing that the algorithm you're using is anything you want, anything you can build on, anything you can learn more about. Um, so I am definitely a, a lifelong learner. I'm always a huge advocate of, okay, maybe you're, um, maybe you're working on something right now, I'm not too sure about something, but it's definitely something you can build on. Um, that is definitely something I, um, that's definitely something I try to make clear um, as, as I instruct with Inspirit AI. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, there's a question about what and when. When to choose OpenCV or when to choose TensorFlow or what to choose when we talk about, you know, maybe deep learning or machine learning or everything all together. So how do you make the choice? Mm. So yes, OpenCV is definitely CV based. You can think of it as a tool as you're working in TensorFlow. Um, as, as we said earlier, like 3 million intensity values in just that single image. And so if we're a Tesla, we're working with tens and thousands of say, say an image. And so it is definitely an application of deep learning. So definitely use both. Awesome, fantastic. And meanwhile, I can already see so much of, you know, positive vibes and positive responses in the chat. Thanks a lot, everyone. These questions are so much valuable and, you know, adding a lot of value to the entire stream. Thanks a lot for asking that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Few more questions. Any AI ML scholarship available, especially for students? Mm. It's, it's very, it's very tough because, um, the AI and ML scholarships that I'm aware of are more um, for, say, upperclassmen looking to get into research in grad school. Um, I definitely recommend that if you're in high school, definitely build your math foundation. Um, work, on, work on some projects that interest you so you can build up experience. And then once you're in college, once you've taken more classes, have networked more, uh, spoken to professors, um, you can try to get into the, the AI ML scholarship field. Awesome, fantastic. Mm -hmm. One more question, all the random advertisements that we get on our mobile phones and all devices, do they also use ML or AI to some extent? Mm -hmm. that, that's a great question. And I, it's, it's so funny because um, we have our AI ethics day where we talk about things like, what does Alexa do with our data? Um, do you do you think Alexa just like listens to us and just says, oh, I'll forget it. It's not very important. <laughs> um, big companies, they definitely care about data. Data is money. Um, and so they absolutely use ML or AI. That's that's advertising is a great way to make money. Um, yeah. Definitely. I personally, whenever I search something, I start getting advertisements mm -hmm. of that particular thing. So can't agree more. What, what's your personal favorite ML course available online? Or what's that go-to, you know, beginner-friendly course, which one can refer to? Ooh, beginner-friendly course. Let's see. Or maybe mm -hmm. your favorite ML course online <laughs> as well. Yeah. Um, I so Someone also asked about, like, my personal story. I was not the most confident in math, but over time, like, working with data, I was like, why not? And so I definitely learned more math. And so one of my favorite um, ML courses is actually Introduction to Deep Learning with uh, Andrew Ng on Coursera. Um, yeah. It has a bit of, say, like calculus. He definitely works through all of the like hyperparameters with you. It's a very, very like kind of like introduction ground up um, course on deep learning that I appreciated. Definitely that. That goes from Andrew is definitely awesome. Cool. What topics of maths are required for CV? Is it necessary to be good in maths? Mm. I I would say it's not necessary to be good, um, but it is important for you to be willing to work to um, get better. Um, linear algebra is very important. Multivariable calculus, very important. 
Um, if you want to branch out as well, probability theory is a good way to shore up um, logical reasoning um, as well. Um, in terms of working with computer vision, um, the, the great thing about AI is that you don't also have to be the one explicitly coding the models. There is also space for people who are AI literate. So people who are able to explain AI to people who say are not very good at math, um, not very good at interpreting data. Um, and so it's, it's a very, very wide field, very flexible. Awesome. One more question. Is there any field according to your point of view where people can research without coding on deep learning? Because what Bud believes is that this area has a lot of potential to grow and to explore at the same time. Ooh, where people can research without coding on deep learning. I think that is a very open-ended question, I feel. Um, I feel like it also kind of asks us to look beyond, say, like a horizon that we haven't quite explored yet, which I really like. Um, I think this kind of also goes back to my 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 answer of um, if that's something you're interested in, make sure you're well, ver well versed in the research that is going on so you know what's going on. And then from there, try to solve a problem about something you're passionate about that maybe you haven't, um, maybe there isn't a lot of um, work in. And so that's, that's kind of how I'd answer that. Very good um, question. <laughs> Definitely can't agree more on that, you know, appreciate all your questions out there. One more question from Harshita. Recently, thermal guns and lenses are being used by army and intelligence. They use temperature interpretation. So is it related to AI and do they really use? Mm. So I don't know exactly, but from what it sounds like, um, there is there is some sort of input from the thermal guns, so say like the heat input. Um, so some sort of interpretation that they would want to use. My concern with that would be using AI hmm. for military purposes um, is probably not the most ethical thing to do. Um, so there's a very good chance that they may use AI. It makes me feel better to think that they would have a human overseeing um, the final say on things. Got it. Again, you know, as there are many subfields in AI, like CV, NLP, and many more, what are your thoughts on this? Like, should we learn something uh, or, or, you know, start with one or master all of them? What do you think? Um, I think as long if if everything interests you, by all means, learn everything. Um, if something in particular, say like computer vision from today, definitely interests you, definitely go deep in that. Um, as long as you're passionate about passionate about something, there is nothing there. Are, there's nothing negative about exploring it and getting better at it. Awesome. Cool. Uh, one more question. I would really love to know that if I apply to any AI oriented company in the future, then in my interview, my projects will be given preference or the on spot questions? Mm. Um, that, that's a good question because uh, the on-spot questions are a way for companies to kind of filter out um, potential employees. But um, definitely once you get through those like initial interview questions, um, your projects are explicit, like your projects are your work. And so if you're able to explain how you went about the process, things you learned, um, demonstrate how you work, those those projects will definitely be very valuable. Definitely. And on, on that note, I do not see any further questions, but I do see one really positive comment over here. Amanda is answering all questions very patiently and so accurately. And this session is definitely fruitful. Kudos to you. Thanks a lot for you know, answering all of these questions. Yeah, I see one, one more, one mm -hmm. more over here, if mm -hmm. we can pick them. Yeah. 
how so, to collect data for computer vision or structured way and are there any resources where where we can get free data set interesting mm -hmm. uh great question uh it's also funny because someone said someone was making fun of r earlier um r has libraries python has like there are classic libraries that you can look up, or not classic libraries, classic data sets that you can work, uh, look up and work with. And so they are definitely available. If you have heard of Kaggle or have worked with Kaggle, Kaggle has data sets there as well. Um, it also has um, a community of people who've also worked on various projects. And you can definitely check out how they have approached things um, and definitely learn from there too. So no need to worry about, about getting free data sets. They're, they're available. Definitely. And I do have one more question to maybe end this Q&A. So it's like, for example, you know, Hack This Fall is a hackathon where everyone will be building something new, collaborating with others, right? From your experiences, do you have any suggestions or some tips which you would like to give to our hackers at Hack This Fall, which, which you know, they can just learn from that suggestion of yours and do something really good during the hackathon? Mm. I would definitely recommend um, anything you're particularly passionate about, definitely recommend that. Um, if you're able to practice with, say, like classic projects, um, get some experience with that. Um, but definitely trying to go your own direction. Um, that's, that's a good way to make a splash and stand out. Awesome, definitely. And everyone are cheering you in the chat. Everyone mm -hmm. is like Amanda overpowered. So <laughs> Thank thanks you. a lot for spending your time with us and you know briefing us everything about computer vision and all about Inspirit AI, the awesome work which you all have been doing. I'm sure you all, all the hackers might be super pumped up and energetic after this session, and they'll be definitely you know thinking around to build something around CV, AI, ML, or anything as, as well. So Sweet. insightful session, and uh, thanks a lot for that. Thank you all so much. Um, I really appreciated the energy in the chat. Um, it's always really good. Um, it looks like this is a great community of people as well. So I know you have a Discord. Do communicate with each other, check in with each other, try to make make each other better, better right? Great, thanks all. Definitely, thanks a lot, Amanda. Mm -hmm. Cool, fantastic. I hope you had a great time in the stream. And I was already seeing so much of excitement in the chat. Uh, people were also asking about my views on AI and ML. I would never speak on that right now because it's all, you know, a flood, a uh, thunder of AI and ML has been there in this session. So I'll be very small person to answer all of those things. But never forget, we do have STF Connects where we have enough time to interact with each other in our Discord. So make sure you join us. Today is Tuesday. Tomorrow, tomorrow is Wednesday, of course, at 9 p.m. IST. Make sure you... Join us on the HTF Connect voice channel and we'll be having so much fun interacting and connecting with each other over there. On that note, I'll quickly bring up the feedback from this session so that you all can fill that form out and you know grab your certificates from this particular live stream. It was indeed a super insightful. I'm super happy that you all have joined us and stayed with us so far, asked all your questions interacted in the live chat you know supported each other's questions and answered tried answering them as well and being interactive while amanda was asking all those questions so thanks a lot for doing that i've already shared the feedback form link make sure you fill that out let me pick one of the lucky giveaway winners as you all know we always do a swag giveaway from each and every live stream so let me quickly pick a giveaway winner how many of you are excited let me know your excitement in the chat or maybe your guess is that who's gonna win uh, this particular giveaway. So I'd love to know and see your guesses if, if it goes right, if it goes somewhere near or something else altogether. Uh, meanwhile, let me find the name, uh, whosoever is the giveaway winner. And the giveaway winner is, I'm not able to find the name, but Harshita Sharma, congratulations, you win the swag giveaway from this particular live stream. Make sure you DM me on Discord so that I can further guide you with the next, next steps to grab your giveaway. Other than that, thanks everyone for joining in. Make sure you check out the schedule for upcoming sessions. 
and do not miss that we are going to have a lot of fun in all the upcoming session as well if you haven't joined our discord make sure you join right now the link is discord.hackthisworld.tech if you're a swag lover just like me head over to hackthisworld.tech swag page and earn your digital swags digital badge and earn a hack this world swag page for yourself by completing some fun challenges on the website that was pretty much from my end if you haven't registered yet make sure to register we have recently crossed 1200 registrations that's super awesome so till then i'll see you in the next stream see you all tomorrow in our discord at 9 pm ist and make sure you take a screenshot by rewinding back share share on socials the learnings from this session the takeaways from this from this session tag hack this fall tag inspirit ai use hashtag hack this fall you can tag ml hacks ml MLH as well. Sorry for that. Uh, from, sorry for fumbling. But I'll take a leave. Good night, everyone, and stay safe.